I was comparing this car to 2020 Volvo XC90 against the new BMW X5 and I realized, man, this is a great seven-seater. Not only can it fit seven adults, it'll do so in full comfort, style, and luxury. So that got me thinking, can the XC90 serve as a proper alternative to the default 7-seat MPVs here in Malaysia, the Toyota Alphas and Valfires? Let's check out the full pros and cons of buying this premium SUV instead of a traditional box-shaped MPV. Now before you think I've gone completely mad, let's talk about the numbers first. The most important factor of all is of course the price and in Malaysia the XC90 starts from 351,000 ringgit. But I would strongly suggest you go for the top range T8 inscription plus that we have here and this one goes for 391,000 ringgit. The Toyota Valfy 2.5 meanwhile is priced at 368,000 ringgit which is close enough while the Alpha 3.5 V6 is 447,000, over 50,000 ringgit more than this Volvo. Of course, you can get the Toyotas at a much cheaper price through grey market dealers, but us at Paulsan.org have always and will forever recommend buying brand new cars instead of used or even grey import vehicles. I think especially for cars like this, people movers, you want a car to be fully dependable and there's nothing better than having a brand new car with a full manufacturer warranty. So anyway, let's move on to dimensions. The XC90 may look completely different next to the Toyota Alpha and Valfires, but their dimensions are actually very, very similar. All cars measure just under 5 meters long, and the wheelbase is near identical at around 3 meters. Between the two, the Volvo is slightly wider, although the MPVs are actually taller, even despite this being an SUV with a much higher ground clearance. So anyway, let's move on to the interior as that's the most defining factor for seven-seaters. First up, the MPV start with a major advantage by having big sliding rear doors. That opens up to a larger door aperture and with the lower sill height, you can quite literally just walk into the cabin. With this tall SUV and its traditional rear doors, obviously getting in is not going to be quite as easy. But actually, it's not that bad. Its rear doors are very long and they open up really wide, so the door aperture is not too bad. It's actually fairly large for this kind of car. You just have to be careful when opening up the doors to not ding other cars when you're parked in tight parking lots. As for the height, this car actually lowers itself down when it's parked, so the step up is not as high as you may first think. Once inside, the biggest difference is in the seating configuration. The Volvo comes with the most traditional seating layout of 2, 3 and 2, as in 2 in front, 3 in the middle and 2 in the back. The Alphards and Valfires that are sold here all have captain seats in the middle row, so the seating configuration is 2, 2, 3. The captain seats do give you a more comfortable, more cocooned in luxury feel compared to this flat bench. But in terms of fitting people in, I think this is more practical. When you want to sit five adults in this car, here you can fit three in the middle row here without having to banish the least like person to the last row. This Volvo also comes with this integrated booster seat for your child to use and you can even push it forward to be closer to the parents sitting in front. Another advantage of having this is that you can still have space to fit in two child seats in the middle row, so you can have three kids all safety secured. Like most MPVs, the Alpha and Valfire only have two isofix in the middle row. One department where the Volvo loses out is in terms of rear amenities. The Toyotas offer a rear entertainment screen, and the aircon vents are placed on the ceiling that cool you down much more effectively. Having said that, the Volvo does come with one giant sunroof instead of two smaller ones in the Toyotas, although here only the front opens while you can open up the rear portion in the MPVs. As for third row seats, entry is less than ideal for both vehicles. In this Volvo, you have to pass through this small gap which is not easy, while in the Toyotas, you have to pass through a very narrow passage in between the two captain seats.
Once you're in, you have less space here compared to the Toyotas. Volvo says the rear most seats are meant for people under 170cm, which is fine by me but not for taller adults. Younger teenagers, however, will feel right at home in the back here. The seats are quite narrow but surprisingly comfortable, and you also get your own set of rear aircon vents in the back here. It helps that there are only two seats in the back here instead of three in the Toyotas. Fitting three in the back of the Toyotas is definitely a struggle, especially since the cabin is obviously narrow in the back over the rear wheels, and the center seat isn't really a seat at all. But for two, it's easily more spacious and more comfortable in the back compared to the Volvo, especially for taller passengers. Now let's talk about the boot because here is the Volvo that has the edge with all the seats up. They are both about the same. Although in the Toyota, you can sacrifice some rear legroom for more cargo space if you need them. But once you start folding the rear seats down, surprise, surprise, it's the Volvo that becomes the more practical option. It's more of a multi-purpose vehicle than the MPVs themselves. The thing is, the rear seats in the Toyotas don't fold flat, they fold up to the sides and up, taking up space. So you're left with a tall but narrow load bay. The fancy captain seats don't fold at all either. In comparison, the Volvo offers a completely flat and wide load bay, ready to swallow up all you can throw at it. So that's all the practical comparisons. But beyond all that, a lot of things fall in the favour of the Volvo, like brand image. Now I know the Alphas and Valfires are known to be VIP cars here in Malaysia, but they are still just Toyota as well. This wears a proper premium badge. That's clear to see on the inside, where the XC90 is obviously the more refined, more luxurious vehicle. As good as the Toyota's interior is, it just can't compare against a true blue, high quality premium car. That's even before we talk about the obvious stuff. The Volvo's Bowers & Wilkins sound system is truly one of the best in the world, and its 400 horsepower twin-engine plug-in hybrid system is far more advanced than what's on offer in the Toyotas. Even in terms of dynamics, the air suspension system gives a more secure, more confident ride and handling package, and safety, this is a Volvo, so enough said. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the XC90 is a better people carrier than the Toyota Alphards and Valfires. Strictly in terms of carrying people around, there's just no beating a proper MPV. Heck, a much cheaper option like the Nissan Serena will do a better job than this one. But as a whole package, as a car to rely on on the weekdays for yourself and on the weekends for the family, I think the Volvo XC90 makes for a compelling package. It's easily big enough to fit seven seats inside, and at this price range, it just offers incredible value next to the Toyotas. Personally, if I'm in the market for a big seven-seater, I think this is going to be my choice. So what do you think? Am I completely losing my mind here or am I making sense? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and stay safe everyone.